Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting a snowy cabin from Austria. I found this photo on Pinterest. I think this photo was taken by Sarah Green from her blog Sarah in the Green. But unfortunately the picture didn't load in the blog for me so I'm not sure. I'll just leave the Pinterest link in my description box. I really love the composition and the mix of lights and darks and all of the different textures. And because of the clarity of this composition, I just feel like this would make a really good practice for me to break down the photo and simplify it into a watercolor painting, which I really feel like I still need to work on. Here I'm just going to roughly sketch the composition. I first place the focal point, which is the simple cabin. And since there's a lot of layers for the roof to give it a proper form, I just divided up the space so I don't forget as I paint later. Like usual, I'm drawing the outline fairly loosely and I try to be light-handed as I'm doing this. This way I can shift the elements around to get the right balance in the composition without having to dig too much into the paper. I really like the small pathway on the right as it swizzles upwards, so I'm going to include it in. And as for the vegetation and rocks surrounding the cabin, I'm just going to indicate the placement very roughly. Since the color of the trees and the mountains are going to be painted quite dark in value, I'm not worried too much about the clarity of the lines as I just need to indicate the space and the placement roughly. But I do want to be mindful of the snowy areas and try to not make so much scratchy lines there because those areas are going to be painted very lightly. So I tried to not sketch in those snowy areas altogether because the pencil marks will show through and you won't be able to erase it once the paint is applied. And that's basically it for the outline. I'll make sure to make a cleaner one on Kofi, but I'm ready to paint now, so let's go over the colors. This is Sepia by Holbein, Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Egamboge by Daniel Smith, Paints Grey Bluish by Schmincke, and Indigo by Schmincke. I'll also be using Bleedproof White by Dr. Paige Martins. I'm going to start by painting the sky using a medium consistency of indigo. I'm using a heavy brush load so I can cover a lot of space. I place the indigo on the top part of the sky, then I'm going to use a clean damp brush to pull the rest of the color downwards so the top part is darker than the bottom. While I still have a bit of indigo, I'm also going to use it to paint the left side of the mountain since it's in shadow. I'm just going to indicate it using a very thin consistency. I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I just like to tap my brush and create light textures. I'm also looking at the reference image and looking at the darkest areas of the mountain. I guess this part is optional, but I tried to depict the light shining on top of the mountain peak. I just used a thin consistency of New Gamboge with a little bit of Quinn Red mixed into it to make the yellow slightly deeper. Here I wasn't very sure of the color that I need to make for the details, so I just made a little guess and used a mix of New Gamboge with Quinn Red and a little bit of sepia to turn it into a reddish brown. Then I also switched to my synthetic brush here and use a light to dry brush load to paint on some of the textures very lightly. I'm going to leave this section for now and move on to the texture for the bottom. For the color, I just used the previous mix with added paints gray bluish and quin red to make a gray that has a slight purple tone. And again, I'm using a light consistency here, trying to create random textures following the cross contour line of the mountain. So I try to mostly direct those textures towards the peak. 
There's a separate mountain slope in front of the peak, so I'm just going to separate it and align it using the same color, but while the surface is still damp, I like to dot in a slightly thicker consistency on the wet surface around the edges, and this will just flow naturally outwards. On the area that I'm painting here, as you can see from the reference image, that part is quite snowy and light, so I'm using an even thinner consistency to paint on the textures. Going back to the sunny peak, after the paint is completely dry, I felt like the color is not golden enough, so I ended up going over it again using the mix of New Gamboge and Quin Red. And while the surface is still wet, I'm just going to leave it to dry and paint on the left side of the mountain, still using the previous color mixture in a very thin consistency as the base. While the surface is still a little bit damp, I'm going to use a slightly thicker consistency of the same color and place on smaller textures and just letting the paint bloom out naturally. For the area behind the cabin, as you can see from the reference image, the color is much darker so I added more paints grey bluish in the mixture and just use a slightly thicker consistency to paint on some of the textures while avoiding the cabin. Because the value is quite dark here, I also try to be careful to not cover the pine tree areas completely. And from here, I'm just going to keep layering on a bit more textures for the mountain. And I'm still using the same color here in a light consistency so I can slowly build it up. And this includes the golden peak, I'm not going to change it into the sepia mixture. Below this mountain slope, I feel like the color is slowly transitioning into a cooler gray than the greens from the plants. So for the color, I switched to indigo mixed with a bit of new gamboge. Just like the area behind the cabin, I'm using a slightly thicker consistency here. So the value is quite dark, but be mindful again of the pine trees as well as the snowy pathway. I feel like I've depicted a lot of the textures already for the mountain, so I'm going to move on to paint the cabin. For the color, I use a mix of New Gamboge with Quin Red and a little bit of sepia to create a reddish brown, but because this has less sepia compared to the part of the mountain peak that we mix, the brown becomes much brighter. And I'm just using a light to medium consistency here to cover the whole area of the cabin while leaving out the window and the stairs. I'm going to darken the bottom of the roof, so I'm going to add Quin Red as well as Sepia into the previous mix to create a darker value of the same color, and I'm just going to very carefully line the bottom edge. Still using the same color, I'm also going to line the edge of the door as well as some wooden support underneath the roof. Then I'm going to use a thinner consistency to paint lines for the texture of the exterior once those darker lines and wooden supports are completely dry. While painting the lines, I like to leave out a bit of the base color in between and after it has completely dry, I like to layer on more lines which I alternate and play around with the spacing, this way the distribution is uneven. After adding on two layers, the surface is a bit too wet for me to add any more paint, so I'm going to move on to paint the line textures as well as the details on the door. For the top of the roof, I just picked up the color that I used to paint the mountain with added paints grey bluish, or you can also just use the thick consistency of paints grey bluish. And using the same color in a thin consistency, I'm going to paint the window on the door and also a light consistency to paint the stairs. After this, I'm going to wait for everything to dry before adding anything on. Meanwhile, I'm going to paint on the pine trees and I just use a thick consistency mix of indigo and a little bit of new gamboge. 
Here I'm using a thick consistency of the color and a light to dry brush load to paint on the leaves and since I've already drawn on the line of the tree, I just follow it downwards making sure that everything is aligned and as I get towards the bottom, I extend the lines a little bit more to slowly create the pine silhouette or the triangular silhouette and since the bottom will be a little bit more dense and more wide, I personally like to increase the brush load so I can cover more area each stroke. I'm also painting in a looser manner as I get towards the bottom since I don't want the details to overtake the whole painting. So the top part is a little bit more detailed than the bottom area of the pine trees. With this set though, I still try to randomize my strokes and also leave out some white negative space here and there. And even though this area is a bit more dense, it doesn't look too heavy at the same time. I'm just going to repeat this two more times for the pine trees on the right hand side. Just like the previous pine tree, as I get around one third of my way down, I'm going to start using a slightly heavier brush load and I also try to press a bit more with my brush to cover more area. And this time, since I just realized that the pine tree on the right is supposed to be in front of the one that I'm painting right now, I left out a bit of space so I can paint on the correct direction of the tree leaves which are coming from the third pine tree. Sometimes for the bottom area, since I use a slightly heavier brush load, the consistency might become a bit lighter. So if that's the case, sometimes I just like to reload my brush with a slightly thicker consistency to cover those areas again. With this set though, this is actually one of the features which makes watercolor more dynamic and kind of free flow. So I like to include it in once in a while so some areas of the pine trees can be a bit lighter than others. After this I feel like I need to increase the value of the mountain on this area so I just added a bit more paints gray bluish. There's a bit of vegetation in front of the pine tree on the left here so I'm just going to use the same green. Next I'm going to paint the base of the cabin and I'm just going to use paints grey bluish in a light consistency. I'm just going to leave it to dry, meanwhile I'm going to paint on the rocks on the foreground and for this I use a mix of sepia and paints grey bluish. I'm looking for a neutral grey here and I'm just painting using a thin consistency to cover the base. I also left out a bit of white negative space in between the rocks to separate them. And while the surface is still a touch damp or cool to the touch, I added a slightly thicker consistency for the bottom area, also pulling some of the paint to create more of a rocky texture. On the right hand side, the details are not too clear from the reference image, but that's totally fine because this is actually one of the things that I want to practice to just paint textures to suggest vegetation or any textures that doesn't take away from the main focal point. And I decided to break it down by wetting the surface on the right hand side while avoiding the pathway. And I used the same green mixture and I'm just dabbing some of the paint randomly on the wet surface until I cover the area unevenly with the screen by playing both with the consistency as well as the direction of my brush strokes. While doing this, I accidentally covered 
some parts of the pathway so I just took off the paint while it's still wet with tissue so I can just take off a whole chunk of it then I try to fix the edges using the same green Next I'm going to switch to a Chinese calligraphy brush which is optional. I haven't used this brush for so long even though I've had it for a long time. And I just feel like these bristles here will come in handy when it comes to making natural textures, especially with a dry brush load. So I'm going to paint the abstract vegetation on the right with this brush. Of course you can also use a synthetic brush but I would suggest to maybe use a frayed brush instead so those textures can be a bit more abstract and unpredictable. These bristles are very flimsy and yet firm at the same time in a sense that it can stay separated when I'm using a dry brush load but it also kind of flops when I put a bit of pressure to the tip of this brush and by being able to do this I find that the textures can be a bit more flexible with some strokes being more thick and yet others are still very delicate and thin. For some of the vegetation on the right hand side, I kind of just directed my brush according to the angle that I want the edges of those vegetation to land on. And I also added some smaller loose pine trees as well with a few more along the pathway. Now this part is completely optional but because I really like the texture that this brush gives, I'm going to just add more leaves along the edges of the pine trees that I've already painted and I just find that this makes the edges look a little bit more abstract and natural and delicate at the same time. I'm also adding a slightly darker value to the pine tree behind the one on the right to separate those two pine trees further. After this, I'm going to paint the vegetation in the foreground. Just like the vegetation on the right hand side, I also don't want to draw attention here so I'm just going to use the same technique by wetting the surface and then using the same mix but this time it has a little bit more indigo. So the green is a little bit cooler. After placing on those textures, I want the edges to be uneven so I just extend it upwards in a lighter consistency. Then with whatever is left on my brush, I painted on more wild vegetation near the rocks as well as in the mid-ground. After this, I'm going to go back to the foreground since I feel like the paint has settled a bit more. It's not as puddly, but it is still damp. I'm just using the same color as the base, but in a much thicker consistency this time. And I just tap it in, creating blooms of a darker value. Next here, I decided to add more textures on the mountain using my calligraphy brush this time so the tips of my brush strokes can be much more delicate. And I'm just using the same color as before, which is a mix of Quin Red, Sepia, and Paints Grey Bluish. When I'm applying the paint, I'm just looking at the reference image and looking at the dark surfaces of the mountains and only placing the textures there. As I'm applying, I like to drag my brush downwards following the cross contour lines of the mountain and just letting the bristles do its thing. Using a thin consistency of the same color, I'm going to start adding textures of the snow near the edges of the vegetation. Again, I'm just dragging my brush according to the angle of the surface. Here I'm using Paints Grey Bluish and I'm painting vertically up and down to create a grassy texture on the side of the cabin base. And I'm also going to do this around the vegetation as well. And this will just help create a base for those vegetation to stand on and for the edges to look a bit more natural. Now the foreground should be completely dry so I'm going to add more of those random abstract textures using the same green mixture from indigo and a little bit of new gamboge. Just like the texture on the right, I want the edges to look a little bit more fine and a bit more randomized. And I'm also leaving out some negative space so you can still see the light color from the base. All that's left is the texture of the snow. Here I'm using a mix of paints grey bluish and sepia to create a neutral grey. 
and as you can see I'm using a very thin consistency so the shadows of the snow is very light and subtle and just like the mountains I placed the textures following the contour of the snow Next, I'm going to darken the windows using a thick consistency of paints grey bluish mixed with sepia. Here I switched to my size 0 brush, which is a round brush, but I flattened the tip so essentially I have like a mini flat brush and it just makes it much easier to fill in the squares. I added this mixture to the brown that I already had on my palette and I placed this underneath the roof to exaggerate the contrast in value. Then I also used this grey in a medium consistency to paint the front face of the stairs giving it the three-dimensional form. I'm also adding darker values underneath the cabin as well as the roof because I want to separate those areas and I just want to redefine them further. Now it's all about balancing the colors, so here I'm adding more of the grey mixture to darken some parts of the snow, especially around the corners because I want to create somewhat of a vignette effect and this will also make the edges cleaner once I take off the masking tape. Here I'm layering on more lines to the cabin since I feel like it's kind of washed out compared to the rest of the painting, so I'm just increasing the saturation. Then I'm going to finish everything off by adding the snow textures. For this I'm using a thick consistency of bleed proof white and depending on the area that I'm painting on, I like to switch my brush around. So I started with my small brush to paint on top of the roof and I'm also going to add on some snow textures on the vegetation as well as the trees. Here I switched to my calligraphy brush since I'm able to cover more area with a single stroke. I'm really happy with the dry brush texture that it creates when the bristles separates like this. Again, you can use an old frayed brush if you don't have access to a calligraphy brush. For smaller areas, I like to focus more on the tip and I also make sure that the bristles are closed instead of opened and frayed. For the pine trees, since I already like the look of the textures, I'm not going to add too much. I'm just going to add a little. It's very easy to overdo the white and it'll end up looking flat if you add too much white. So just be very mindful when you're adding on the snow texture. Since these pine trees are much larger, I am paying a bit more attention to the direction of my brush strokes. I try to follow the direction of the leaves, which goes around each section of the tree trunk. For the smaller trees at the back, I just use the tip of my brush and I try to run my brush sideways while tapping it along the way with a dry brush. I still feel like the cabin needs to be a bit more saturated so here I'm adding the dark brown from a mix of New Gamboge, Quin Red and Sepia. And I also decided to reline and add more saturation to the textures of the cabin. I'm quite happy with how this looks and I think I'm ready to unmask and reveal the painting. I'm just going to take one final look at the painting and I realized that I want to add more textures to the snow since the white parts look a bit too empty compared to everything else that I've painted. I know that this isn't part of the reference image but it's just a personal taste. But yeah, that's it for the painting. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more like this, please consider subscribing. Like usual, the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!